I'm Christina May, the online pastor at World Harvest Church in Enid, Oklahoma. You're about to hear a spirit-filled message from our pastor. So grab your Bible, and if you're a coffee lover like me, grab a cup of coffee and get ready for a personal word that God has for you today. Well, let's prepare to get into the Word of God today. If you brought your Bibles or your device, get that out. Let's prepare to dig in and to dive in. As they set up here, let's go to the Father God one more time in prayer as we prepare to get into our message. Heavenly Father, we now we thank you for uh, this time that we're about to embark upon. Lord, this uh, that we're about to hear is something that you've downloaded to me over these last few weeks. And Lord, I believe it is critically important for so many that are hearing my voice today. So, Lord, give us the eyes to see what you want us to see, Lord God. Father, give us the ears to hear what you want us to hear. In your name we pray. And everybody said it with me. Amen and amen. I want you to open up my, your Bibles, my Bible too, to the very first book of the Bible. Anybody know what book that is? Genesis. We're going to go Old Testament. Go with me to the book of Genesis here this morning. And I want to bring you a message that has been stirring my heart here over the last few weeks. And I believe for many of us here today that this is going to be what I call an in your face message. Anybody need a good challenge in their life today? Well, this is going to be one of those messages today. And I've entitled this message simply this quitters campers and climbers. Quitters, campers, and climbers. Let's look at this, Genesis chapter 11. I want us to look at a story here. We're going to read about a man here that probably many of y'all, unless you've read through the book of Genesis, you have not heard of before. This is a man, uh, uh, he's what I would call an infamous man. Uh, but many of y'all, if you know the Bible, the stories of the Bible, you know his son. You've heard the story of his son many times. So let's look at Genesis chapter 11, starts out in verse 27. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Genesis eleven twenty-seven 27 says this. This is the count of Terah's family. Not Terah Timon back here on the back row, but Terah, a, a, a guy. It says this, Terah was the father of, this is the guy many of y'all know, Abram, later becomes Abraham. So we're talking about Abraham's father. Father of Abram, he had also a son named Nahor, and another son named Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot, verse 28. But Haran, what happened to Haran? But Haran died. He died in the Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father was still living. Now, I kind of referred to just a second ago in a baby dedication. Those of you that know Dylan Caitlin's family, you know the tragedy that took place here. What's it been a year or two ago when they lost their child just, just a few weeks out from giving birth? You know, I have never lost a child to death, but I've heard it said that for a parent, the greatest pain that they will ever face or feel upon the planet Earth is if they lose a child. There's been many of y'all that have lost a child. And I want you to know I, my heart breaks for you, but I also speak God's grace over you and God's healing power over you. And just like Dale and Caitlin, Dylan and Caitlin stood here with, with little Hattie, I believe that there is joy even after the passing of a loved one. But we see here tragedy struck Tara's home. I want you to see something, though, if you'll skip a few verses with me and jump down to verse 31. In Genesis chapter 11, verse 31, and he goes on and says this, And one day Terah took his son Abram, who later becomes Abraham, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, who later becomes uh, Sarah, and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran's child, and he moved away from the Ur of the Chaldeans, and he was headed... Oh, you need to see this next few verses with me, these next few words. He was headed to the land of where? Come on, everybody say Canaan. So what was his destination? Where was he going to? Everybody say Canaan. But they stopped at Haran. Now, let me just, because this can be just a little bit of confusion, a little bit of confusion here, sit in if you allow. So Terah has these boys. One of them's name is Haran, and he dies. He goes on his way to Canaan, and he stops at a place called Haran. Haran, the same name as his son who has died, okay? 
So Haran is a character in this story, but it's also a place. He's a son, but it's also a city, all right? So he stopped at Haran, and what did he do? What did Terah do? Everybody say those next two words with me. He settled there. Wait a minute. I thought he was going somewhere else. Verse 32. We'll come back to that thought. Terah lived for 205 years, and he died while still in Haran. Now, last week, the Lord brought a message to us talking about how our life, how we are all in a race of life. Come on, we're all in a race. We're all meant to do something. We're all here for a purpose. We all have a destiny. And and today, though, I want to shift that. We're, We're not just in a race of life, but we are also in and on a journey. Look at somebody beside you, tell them, I'm on a journey. We are all on a journey. This is our second Sunday. Tammy and I have been back here after three weeks off. Come on, anybody else get a vacation this summer besides Brad and Tammy? Nobody got a vacation? Come on, man, what's wrong with y'all? Don't y'all take vacations? Come on, how many of y'all need a vacation? Anybody need a vacation? You have my permission to take a vacation, all right? Go tell your boss tomorrow morning. My pastor said I could take a vacation. Be careful how you use that, all right, if you would. I don't want to get you in trouble. You know, Tammy and I, we spent three weeks, uh, you know, we got a little place over in Lake Ten Killer in eastern Oklahoma. So, you know, we spent a lot of time journeying, a lot of miles, a lot of road time, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth over to the lake. And the Lord just, actually a couple of weeks ago, dropped this message and brought it by my path. And then he just began to see this, that in the same manner that we, in this race, we're also all on a journey. There's a journey that we're all on. And it's in this journey that I believe that there are three types of people. Even uh, everybody that's listening to me right now, you are one of these three types of people. Let's talk about these three types real quickly. There are the quitters. Hopefully that's not you. There are the campers and there are the climbers. I need you just to help me in my message today. I want you to look at somebody beside you and tell them you look like a climber to me. You'll understand this more in just a few moments as I dig into this a little bit uh, deeper. But let's talk about this. The quitters, the campers, the climbers. Let's First of all, let's talk about the quitters here today. These are people who in their journey of life, they start to climb, but they quit. They quit. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, you know, throwing in the towel. You know, I've got a towel up here, throwing in the towel. It's interesting that the phrase throwing in the towel has actually come from uh, boxing, that in boxing, when you have two people in the middle of a ring, they're in the middle of this competition, in the middle of this fight, if one of the boxers gets the place, he cannot go on any longer. And his manager there in the corner, he sees my guy, he can't go on, he's tired, he's hurt, he's too injured. What they would do is they would take a towel and they would throw it out into the middle of the ring. And when that towel would hit the floor, suddenly the ref would see that and the referee, he would call the fight over, done. And whatever side threw in the towel, that was the side that quit and automatically the other side won. And and I, I don't think I'm talking to a lot of quitters today, but I do know this. There are many people, I believe in the body of Christ, life has got too tough. It's got too hard. Too much has happened. And they are simply throwing in the towel. <laughs> it's good to be on the front row, right, guys? <laughs> throwing in the towel. Look at your name and tell them you can't throw in the towel. I'm reminded of a story I heard years ago. Uh, in 1953, there was this lady named Florence Chadwick who she had swum the English Channel several times and she decided she was gonna swim from Catalina Island to the California coast. And so she set out to swim on July the 4th of 1953. She began to swim. I mean, a 26 mile swim. Now, I don't know about you, but that's crazy. Man, I can swim about 10 feet and I'm ready for a rest. I don't know how many of y'all swimming capabilities are, but she began to swim and 
And, you know, hour after hour after hour passed, and about halfway through her swim, this heavy fog sets in to that area right there. But she began to press through, you know, uh, the, the safety boats fall along. And, and finally, she got to this point. She was so tired. She was frustrated. She couldn't see. And so she decides that she's going to give up and quit. She threw the, in the towel. She called for the boat. The boat come, picked her up and put her in. And the guys on the boat said, why did you quit? She said, I'm just done. And the people on the boat said, look, look where we're at. And at that, the fog parted just a little bit. And she saw she was only 100 feet away from the finish line. There are a lot of people in the season of life that we're in that because of frustration, disappointment, discouragement, life not happening the way they think it should happen, they are throwing in the towel. They're quitters. They're quitters. Bless God, I believe, though, that I'm here to tell each and every one of us, you don't have to quit. Come on, what's the difference between a quitter and a climber? Let me tell you, it's the ability to endure the situation that they are in. And I believe that if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, that you possess the ability to endure anything that will ever come your way. Listen, it's easy to quit. It's easy to throw in the towel. It's easy to say, you know what, I'm just tired. I am done. I'm going to quit. Those of you that know me, I, I am known really, uh, I've got a little, uh, I know you can't tell sitting in this, out there in the chairs looking at me on the stage, but I've got a little bit of stubbornness to me. Thank you for not going to say, thank you for nobody saying amen to that. And thank you for Tammy keeping her lips closed right over there on the front row. But there's a little bit of stubbornness to me. But I think of something that happened in my life back my junior year of high school is about this time of year, all those many years ago, however many years ago that was, my junior year. But um, back in that day, we used to have a church softball team. We used to play softball in this church league. It's quite fun. And uh, this particular season, it was coming in the 1st of August, um, my junior year, football, two, two days is getting ready to start in a week. We had about one week left of softball, the softball season. We, we, we played this particular game and kind of like I told you all about my pickleball experience at tournament that I had back in June, you know, it was the same thing. I, I, I played the softball game and I sucked. It was just, I couldn't do nothing right. I couldn't hit the ball, you know, it just, it was bad. And so I remember having this thought, well, football starting here in a week, week and a half, I'm just going to quit. We still got like three games left. I'm just going to quit. So I remember going to our coach who was one of our ushers at church and said, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I'm quit. Okay. And I remember going to my car and leaving. Now, about halfway home, I happened to look in my rearview mirror, and my dad is following me. My dad would never do that before. Now, how many of y'all remember the days of cell phones? You know? Come on, how many of y'all remember the days you had to talk to somebody with your voice and see each other face to face to communicate? Y'all remember those days? Maybe we should bring that back a little bit. But um, so I'm like, well, I wonder what he wants. I didn't have cell phones, you know? So I pulled over on the side of the road because I knew my dad wanted to talk to me. This was so out of character for my dad to be following me. I rolled down the window of my car and he just walked up to the window. He said, I heard you quit. I said, well, yeah. He said, why'd you quit? And I said, well, you know, football's starting here, you know, and I just need to get my focus back on football. And uh, he said, okay. And he, what he said next, I've never been able to shake. He said this, he said, listen, he said, if you're quitting because of football, he said, I can understand that. And he said, okay. But he said, if you're quitting because you're frustrated and you're discouraged, he said, that's not a reason to quit. <laughs> he turned around, went back and got in his car. That was it. I sat there and thought about that for just a moment. I said, well, why am I quitting? And I had to be real honest. I said, you know, I'm, I told myself this, this conversation, come on. How many of you know you can have some really good conversations with yourself sometimes, right? <laughs> So I just had this conversation with myself. I said, well, why am I quitting? And I just heard myself say, it's because you're frustrated and you're discouraged. And all of a sudden, something rose up in me. And you thought, you know what? I'm a Mendenhall, and Mendenhalls don't quit. And you know what I did? I finished the season. I'm glad. But I don't say that to glorify me, but there was something that was implanted in me at a young age that year that I've never been able to shake. There's one thing about Mendenhalls. We're not quitters. 
There's one thing, you know, Tammy and I've had opportunities as we, this church is going on 23 years now that we could have closed up shop because things weren't going well. And we like, yeah, well, let's just go back to Gaiman. Let me tell you, don't quit. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, don't quit. Come on, say it again. Say, I will not quit. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven says this. It goes on to the last part of verse seven. It says, we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We are fragile clay jars containing a great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is, come on, everybody say it with me. It's from where? Come on, we got great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side, the scripture says, by troubles, but we're not crushed, it says there. Amen. You see that? We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are, come on, everybody say it with me, not destroyed. Life happens to us all. I wish I could stand here on this stage today and tell you, serve God and you'll never have another problem again. But Jesus, he says something opposite of that in John 16. He said, in this world, you're going to have some problems. Now, what's the difference? With God in my life, his power is dwelling inside of me, and the power of God, bless his name, is going to take me through anything that I'll ever face in my life. Amen? I don't have to face life on my own. Amen? Come on, look at somebody tell them, don't be a quitter. Don't be a quitter. Now, let's look at the second type of person here because I truly believe that as you're hearing my voice today, there are not a lot of people that identify as the quitting, that they've quit. Many identified, yeah, I've had the opportunity to quit, but you didn't quit. You kept going, right? But the second type of person, I believe, for those of you that are hearing my voice right now, this is the highest majority. It's the campers. It's the campers. What are the campers? Let's dive into this here for just a few moments. The campers are people who start into their journey. They get to a certain level and they plateau and they start camping out. They have the mentality, well, this is really as good as it gets. It's as far as I'm going to go. See, for a quitter, setbacks cause them to throw in the towel. For the camper, a setbacks cause them, cause them to step back and just begin to hang out. It is the camper. Now, Tammy and I, as I shared just a few moments ago, we're coming off three weeks of not preaching, three-week break, three weeks of, woo, rest. Come on, how many of you know resting is good? And I tell you, it came at an opportune time because, I mean, I hit the end of, uh, end of June, 1st July, like, man, I am so tired. I just, man, all the stress and strain of ministry, all the stress and strain of life, I'm like tired. And I tell you, I love the times of rest. I love the times of rest. But there's something that you, there's something, listen to me, that I need to understand. It's okay to take a rest, but we can't allow the rest to turn into a place of comfort that causes us to say, you know what, I think I'm just going to stay. I'm just going to stay. You know, three weeks, listen, never in my life have I not been in an in-person church service for three weeks in a row. <laughs> I've always been in church all my life. If I didn't know any better, I think I was born on the altar at church. <laughs> Anybody else with me? Come on, where's the church brats? Any church brats around here, right? And, and so for those three weeks, Tammy and I was part of our online family. And online family, I'm glad you're with us. It's not the same as being in person, but I know some of y'all can't make it here. But, you know, I come back. In fact, uh, one of our guys right over here, we... <laughs> Coming in last Sunday, I haven't told him this, but he asked me this question. He said, you know, you're back. He said, did you have that thought that you just wanted to stay away? <laughs> of course, I put my church face on my front and each, you know, and I, oh no, never had that thought. And I'm like, I did have that thought. <laughs> I'm like, church went good for three weeks out of me. Can I take another three weeks? I'm thinking, or, you know, maybe I'll just stay, maybe six months. And there was that part of me that like, this is, I'm just kind of a, Ah, but there was something that's welled up inside me the last few weeks, man, this is my purpose. This is my destiny. I got to get back to my post. I got to get back where I'm supposed to be. Campers, campers are those people. Let me tell you what causes a person to be a camper. Well, tiredness, weariness can cause a person to be a camper. How about looking for comfort? Comfort causes, you know, because being a camper, it's comfortable. Come on, everything's okay. 
You know, we, we, we got my tent, got my, got my, I should, I should have had me some drink up here. You know, I, I got my, my water, you know, I got these things, you know, and, and it's comfortable. This is what I've learned about the journey of faith that we're on. If you reach a place where you're comfortable, you're not climbing, you're not going, you're not pursuing. Because there's something we like to say around here, if you're comfortable, you don't need the comforter. And you know what I'm talking about. Jesus said the Holy Spirit's our comforter. So if Jesus said, I'm gonna send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit to you, he says this in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, he must mean that we are gonna be in places in our life where we need the comforter. Come on, places where we are not comfortable. Anybody been there before? Amen? What causes us to be campers? Let me tell you what I found, success. Success can also be an enemy of progression. When you experience success in your life, whether it's a business or whether it's a family a situation or whatever it may be, if you experience some success, you're like, you know, you, you feel like you kind of arrived for a few moments. You're like, hey, this is pretty cool. I had this happen to me for years. See, we started this church back in January of 1998, 23 years ago, coming into 24 years this coming January. And for years, we had this goal of having our own facility, of having a church building just like this. This, what you're experiencing today was a dream we've had for a whole lot of years. And let me tell you what happened. You know, we bought the land back in 2005, but it was 10 more years before we built this building. So we're just a few weeks away from being in this building for six years. This building isn't a new building anymore. It's old, man. We got a projector going out up there, for goodness sake. And we got to buy new projectors, man. These things are worn out, you know? And, and so what happened to me back in 2015, we had spent so much time trying to get to this place. We got here, and I'm like, we did it. We built a building. 10 years of planning, 10 years of raising money, 10 years of strategizing. We did it. And you know what? I'm sitting around like this. Ah, we have arrived. We got there. And what I didn't realize I failed was this, that the building was never the destination. It was just a step. And I found myself having these thoughts, God, I've had such a focus on getting this done. Now what? And I tell you, there was a shift that had to take place in me to realizing the building was just a benchmark. It was just a moment. It was just a thing. It was just a tool. But there's so much more. Campers, success can sometimes be our own worst enemy in that. You and I, success. Let me tell you, God has so much more for us. Camper, what causes somebody to be a camper? I'm going to talk more about this next week. How about issues? Anybody have any issues before? Any problems? Yeah, we've had, you know what? Having challenges in our life many times causes us to want to stop. Like, you know what? If it's always going to be a fight, if it's, you know, Jonathan talked about it in worship, if we're always contending, if we're always fighting, then sometimes we're like, I'm just tired of the fight. Just tired. We take a break. I love something that the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. It says this Proverbs 24, verse 16 says this The godly man trips how many times? Seven times, but they will get up again. Ooh. They'll what? Get up again. We may have problems seven times, but the, the godly man, what does he do? Come on, he gets up again. Come on, look at your name and tell me you got to get up. We may have mistakes. We may have failures. We may have issues, things that try to get us to stop. But let me tell you, a, a, guy, a, a man, a woman that's pursuing God, he's going to get up again, and they're going to keep going. Look at your name and tell them you got to keep going. Come on, tell them you got to keep going. we got to keep on going. we got to get it going. Amen. Let's talk about climbers. Climbers. Why is this so critically important? I love what the Scripture says in Psalm 24, verse 3. It says this, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in this holy place? There's one thing that I know. It sings about the, the things of God, our purpose and our destiny, always uses an analogy of climbing. 2 Corinthians 3.18, again, I'll get into it more next week, says we're changed from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Come on, our life, it's a climb. Our life, it is a journey. And the best way that I can illustrate that is just simply climbing this ladder. Wherever you're at in your life right now, let me tell you, there's a higher level that you can go to. You may have an okay marriage right now, but God's got a great marriage for you. Come on, you may have an okay job right now, but God's got a great job. Come on, you may be okay in your Christian walk, but I can guarantee you God's got more for you. 
Don't get satisfied with where you're at. Let me tell you, and just the Lord laid this on my heart during worship time. Man, some of y'all, you're okay with your worship, but man, God is looking for even a deeper level of worship. Come on, it's about going higher. It's about going with God. You know, you, you, you think about Moses when he, uh, he delivered the nation of Israel out of the promised land. God, he, he called him up. He called him up to the mountain because God wanted to meet him there. See, if every one of us, I, I, I really truly believe God's calling us up today. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen in these next four months, but there's a stirring in my heart for our future. There's a stirring that I believe that God is calling us all. He's calling us as a church to forget about what's behind and to press on what lies before. See, climbers look at setbacks as simply opportunities. Climbers, when they fall down, when they hit a, a hard moment, they, they pick themselves up, they dust themselves off, man. Uh, they put a little biofreeze on it, you know what I'm talking about? And, and they get to going again. That's the difference between a climber and a camper. It's, it's moving up into that next level. It, you know, are you contending today or are you just pretending? Wow. Thoughts to ponder, things to think about. Paul said it so beautifully well. Philippians chapter four, uh, 3, verse 13. I read it last week. He said this in the last part of 13. He says, I, I do have one compelling focus. This is the Passion Translation. One compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I, I love this, fasten my heart to the future. I fasten my heart to the future. Listen, somebody needs to hear this message today. God is calling you. He's calling you to a place of discomfort. He's calling you to go where you've never gone before. He's calling you. Some, there's somebody here, God's calling you, been calling you, and he's been working on your heart, man, to get out and start a business. Some of you, God's been calling you. He's been challenging you. Somebody needs to enroll maybe in some, uh, a school. Maybe it's in a Votech. Maybe it's in an online community somewhere. Some, God's call, what, I don't know. What does it look like for you? I don't know, but I just sense this overwhelmingly passion in my heart that God is calling us to a higher level. What does that higher level look like for you? What does it look like? And there's, I tell you, I, there's something there. Maybe he's calling you out of a, a habit and say, come on, you don't have to live like that. Come up here with me. Maybe he's calling you out of an attitude. Maybe he's calling you out of fear. Maybe it's out of bitterness. Let me tell you, I believe if we listen real closely right now, God's calling us all. Say, come walk with me. Come walk with me. Come walk with me. Will you answer that call? And again, I don't know what this looks like in the context of your life, but I believe God wants to do something incredible in your life these next four months. I believe God wants to do something incredible in us as a church these next four months. So let's not hang out at the campsite. Let's get to moving on. Let's get to tracking with him. As in 1952, the man by the name of Edmund Hillary, he was a guy that had this desire to climb Mount Everest. Why would you want to do that? That is crazy. Anyway, he had failed many times to climb. After his last failure, he was with a group of business leaders. So he was reporting on his failure. And behind him was this huge picture of Mount Everest. At the end of his speech, he turned to that picture and he said this to that picture. He said, Mount Everest, he said, I want you to know I will conquer you. And the reason why I'm gonna conquer you is because you're not growing any bigger. He took his finger and pointed at himself. He said, but I am. It was on his next attempt that he climbed the mountain. What am I saying today? This is what I'm saying. Genesis chapter 11, Terra, Abram's dad, he got to a place. Was it the agony of losing his son? I don't know. Was he just growing older and just tired of the battle? I don't know. All I know is this. He stopped. He became a camper. He settled. Did he have the mentality, well, this is as good as it gets? I don't know. 
All I know is the Bible says that Terah was headed to Canaan. Now, if you know anything about Canaan, I just don't have time to go into it right now, but Canaan was the place of promise for God's people. Canaan land represented purpose and destiny. Now, those of you who know the Bible know that the man who actually got there was Abraham and began to live there. I am not sure if God did not call Terah his dad first. And because Terah, his dad, decided to stop, God said, well, since he's not going to do it, i got to use somebody else. And we know the story of Abram. What does this mean for y'all? God's got a purpose. He's got a destiny. Come on, as long as there's breath in your lungs, he's got more for you. Come on, we may not be where we need to be, but are you better than you used to be? Listen, if you can't say, yeah, I'm a whole lot better than I used to be, you may be a camper. And I think God's calling us all to get up out of the chair. Let's start climbing with him. Come on, is there any climbers in this house today? Climbers have purpose. Climbers, they walk, they talk about what God's doing in life. Campers are people of great influence. God's looking for some influencers today. Thanks again for listening. We hope that this message inspires, challenges, and fuels you up to take a real Jesus to a real world. If you'd like to connect with us in any way, please go to harvestenid.com slash connect. Or if you'd like to learn more about us as a church, please go and check us out at harvestenid.com. We can't wait to share another message with you next week.